Today we're gonna make seven different cake drums at home with cost-effective supplies you may already have on hand. For this method, we will need contact paper, four corrugated round cake boards, electrical tape or duct tape, and scissors. You're going to want to use electrical tape or duct tape for this one because it helps the contact paper adhere to the sides of the boards more effectively, making it easier to tape down the contact paper at the end. If you're using duct tape for this step, simply use scissors to cut off the excess duct tape before moving on to the next step. Sanitize the contact paper, Cut the contact paper about four inches larger than the cake drum to leave about two inches of space on all sides for folding the contact paper in. I'm making little pleats as I'm folding the contact paper up and over. While you're adhering the contact paper to the cake board, it may pull off as it sits, but once you make your creases, it's much easier to quickly fold the contact paper back down and apply tape before it has time to release again. You'll probably have some air bubbles like I do here, but don't worry, they're easy to get out, as you can see. And it's okay to have a little hole in the center because that's where the cake will be going. For this method, we will need scissors, four corrugated round cake boards, half inch thick ribbon, and a hot glue gun. You're going to want to hot glue all four cake boards together by applying the hot glue towards the edge of each board. Then carefully hot glue the ribbon to the sides of the stacked boards. You can add a little bow to hide the seam or simply put the seam on the back side. For this method, we will need a tack cloth, wood slab, food safe butcher block conditioner, a palm sander is preferred, 60 grit sandpaper, and 120 grit sandpaper. To cut the wood, you'll need to know how to safely use a chainsaw or know someone who can cut a slab for you. Cut extras if possible in case the wood splits. Leave it in a clean, dry space for one month. Use a palm sander with 60 grit sandpaper, then use 120 grit. If you're doing this by hand, it will take much longer. Apply four coats of food safe butcher block conditioner with a minimum of 20 minutes rest in between each coat. This cake board is great because it's reusable, heavy duty, a crowd pleaser, and you can make any custom size and thickness you need. For future uses, reapply food safe butcher block conditioner when the cake drum changes in color or texture. For this method, we will need cardboard, shortening, scissors, fondant, a knife, a pen, a cake board, compass, string or something round, optional ribbon, duct tape, a hot glue gun, and a fondant smoother. For this method, we'll start by drawing circles on clean cardboard. As you can see, we can use any of these techniques to draw a circle. Then, after cutting one circle out, we can use it as a template to draw the rest. Tightly wrap duct tape around the edges of the stacked cardboards to hold them together. Then, cut off the excess duct tape. At this point, you don't need to worry about it looking nice. We're just going to cover it up later. We're covering the cardboard with duct tape to protect it from moisture damage. Cut off the excess duct tape, but leave at least one inch around all the edges of the cake board. Again, this does not need to look pretty because we're going to cover it up later. Now we're using more duct tape to smooth out the sides of the cake board and make the bottom uniform so that it sits uniformly. I'm just pleating the duct tape similarly to the technique used on the first method. There are two looks you can achieve with this method. If you decide to choose the first look, add shortening to the sides of the cake drum. If you decide to choose the second look, do not add shortening to the sides of the cake drum. Cover your surface with powdered sugar while rolling your fondant. Turn it 90 degrees each time it becomes elongated to help keep it in the shape of a circle and to keep it from sticking to the table. Make sure enough powdered sugar is always underneath it so it easily slides around. Use a fondant smoother vigorously until a smooth surface is achieved. 
If there are air bubbles in the fondant, just use your knife to poke a hole through the fondant on top of the bubble to release the trapped air. Then rub the hole with your fondant smoother until it disappears. This is the first look. You can leave the cake board like this, or you can cut the fondant off the edges to start making the second look. In order to use this cake drum correctly, you'll need to ice your cake on a separate board, then put it in the refrigerator for one to three hours before transferring it to this cake drum. The icing should be firm enough to only need mild touch-ups after transferring. I wrapped my ribbon around twice because the ribbon was a little too small for the height of the cake board and it still came out great. For this method, we will need scissors, duct tape, four corrugated round cake boards, and a hot glue gun. Just hot glue the cake boards together like we did for the second method. Then tightly wrap duct tape twice around the boards and cut the excess duct tape off. Sanitize the cake drum and it's finished. For this method, we will need cardboard, shortening, knife, scissors, a shell or comb fondant tool. A link for it is in the description below. A new clean paintbrush, a pen, cake board or something round, tan fondant, two shades of brown fondant, a bowl of water, brown food coloring, duct tape, and aluminum foil. I used the same techniques for making the base of this cake drum as I did for the fourth method. Cover the top and sides of the board with shortening. Cover your surface with powdered sugar while rolling your fondant. Remember to keep turning your fondant to 90 degrees when it becomes elongated. Make sure enough powdered sugar is always underneath it so it easily slides around. I'm using the rolling pin to smooth out the top. Carefully cut the edges off. I'm making the rings of the tree's inner wood. There's a link in the description for the exact tool I'm using. It is with a set of other tools because I could not find a store that sold it separately, but a blade and shell modeling tool can be used instead. I'll provide a link in the description for it. I'm popping the bigger air bubbles and smoothing out the fondant. I probably should have done this step before making my lines, but it doesn't need to look perfect because real wood stumps are imperfect and a cake will be covering most of it. Now I'm unevenly mixing the two fondant browns together. I'm crinkling up the aluminum foil to make random indentations all along the bonnet strip. cake drum correctly, you'll need to ice your cake on a separate board, then put it in the refrigerator for one to three hours before transferring it to this cake drum. The icing should be firm enough to only need mild touch-ups after transferring. I'm making lines about every inch apart, give or take half an inch. I'm using the rounded part of the tool to round off each line. If you're using a straight edged tool, you can round out the lines by keeping the edge on the bark, but moving the handle from side to side. I'm creating larger dents sporadically and indenting the top edges. Add brown food coloring to a bowl of water so that it's a tan color when painted on the fondant. Darken the brown water, then use it to paint a circle in the middle of the drum. Then paint lines around the outside edges for a more realistic look. Use brown food coloring to paint in the deep cracks. Then use your brown water mixture periodically to smear the darkest brown around the bark. The darkest color will pull into all the little cracks, giving it nice dimension. After 24 hours of drying, the cake drum will change from looking shiny to matte. 
For this method, we will need masking tape, food safe, foil wrap, cake board or something round, a utility knife, Gorilla tape or double-sided tape, a pen, scissors, and half inch thick foam core board. Sometimes advertised as 8 16th of an inch. I found a 20 inch by 30 inch piece of foam core board at Joanne Fabric, but larger sizes are available online if needed. Carefully, use your utility knife to puncture the top layer of foam core board. Going deeper each time you have cut one full circle. Hold the utility knife like a pencil to further protect from injury. You can use Gorilla Tape or double-sided tape for this step. If you're using double-sided tape, fold the excess tape down onto the bottom of the board, then proceed to the next step. Again, we're going to cut about four inches larger on the cake drum. This cake drum is very professional. It can bear a lot of weight and the sizing can be customized to each cake. Masking tape is great for this step because the creases lay pretty flat. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.